<clears throat> Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to see you today. My name is Dustin Cormier. Welcome to How to Rock Astrology. Today's episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about what it's like when you have the sun in Capricorn and Mars in the sign of Aquarius. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about Mars and Aquarius in general, feel free to check out the Mars and Aquarius video. <clears throat> it's about a 40-minute video where I kind of break down the astrology of what Mars is like in the sign of Saturn ruled Aquarius. The big hitting greatest hits of that video tend to relate to the fact that Mars is A, right next to its exaltation point, which is Capricorn. It's not in Capricorn, so it's not technically exalted. So there's a lot of fun, fun, funky looking <clears throat> negative quality to this relationship of Mars and Saturn. Saturn is a neutral planet to Mars. It's not an enemy and it's not a friend. Uh, <clears throat> what usually comes through uh, is a mostly positive though. Part of the reason is, the main reason is because exaltation actually works by proximity. Mars and Aquarius is the sign right next to its exaltation point in Capricorn. One of the reason the, the reason that Mars is exalted in Capricorn, or the, the the logic that this expresses, is that Saturn constrains and reigns in the outgoing animal impulse energy of Mars. You know this. I, you can think that I'm just kind of like, oh, well, it would be good. You know, I'm, sometimes astrologers, us astrologers, just go by our intuition to connect things. Uh, this, for me, is... Every astrologer is just going by their intuition. Uh, but the, my logic here is coming from the Vedic tradition. Uh, and this is the logic that pervades Mars's exaltation in Capricorn. Saturn... Mars is an exalted in the sign of Capricorn because Saturn reigns in Mars's imp again outgoing impulse energy. So it cha this is a person who can channel their Mars energy well, their animal impulse energy, because there's something outside of themselves that they are aligning their action to. And Mars is the kind of planet who's digging a tunnel, and they need to have the people behind them. You know, it's like they lean, lean back. It's like, okay, which direction am I going? Straight? All right. And they go completely straight. And then they'll have to reel back a bit and go, okay, I've been going straight for a while. Oh, I'm sp supposed to go right now a little bit? All right. They'll turn right. And then they'll go, and then they'll burrow to the right. Silly image. But the point is, is that Mars is the straightforward energy. And they really do well when the, their direction, they're, they're kind of being guided in a way, in a competitive way, by the standard that is put before them. Climbing a mountain. When you're a musician, you know, Mars and Capricorn does well at everything that they do because their impulse and desire is being reined in collectively by a standard, by an industrial standard, by what everybody else does, the traditional way of doing whatever it is. When Mars is closer to Capricorn, it means that the Mars understands and is being guided, its, its penetrative energy is being guided by a standard outside of itself. Mars in Cap Cancer is debilitated, and this is because Mars becomes emotional. It's not objective. He can't detach from its action. So when it's burrowing in the tunnel and it says, you know, like it's constantly burning itself and saying like, did I go too far? I think I've gone too far. I, f I feel like, I feel like I'm going too far. And everyone's like, shut, just go, go. We'll tell you when to stop. And Mars and Cancer says, okay. And then they start going again. And then they kind of like their energy and anger gets aggravated by the fact that everyone's telling them to do where to go because they want to do it themselves. They want to come from their own emotional impulse energy. 
That's when Mars is debilitated in cancer. And so they're constantly asking the people around them who they're supposed to be their guides and their leaders and their directors and their subordinates. You know, they keep constantly reiterating, like, am I doing okay? How do I look? And that messes, that messes up what Mars is supposed to do. Mars is the sword pointed outward to cut through, to be objective and logical. As long as you know that you're rationally and logically doing checks, checking your progress, not going too far at, without checking your progress. Mars enjoys doing this in general. And again, this is why Mars is exalted in Capricorn. So here... Mars in Aquarius is not quite the same. Mars in Aquarius is a little bit more squirrely. They love to have the freedom and independence to stand out in a crowd. And they kind of, Mars in Aquarius is still the same kind of energy of someone who's looking for other people's directives in this tunnel that they're digging through. Digging, digging, digging. Mars, anyone's Mars wants other people to guide them, to help give me a strata upon which to apply this animal impulse energy together. So we can all see what I'm doing. And if I'm doing anything wrong, you guys are there to tell me, oh good, I'm cutting a little bit too far to the right, start bending to the left. So that my work ultimately is A, better and more efficient, but B, more importantly, I don't have an emotional reaction to failing. Mars in Cancer, where it's debilitated, always has an emotional reaction of having failed, and that builds and builds and feeds back so that they never really get anything because they're thinking about the thinking about the doing. Mars in Aquarius just says, what am I doing? Is this what everybody does? All right, I'm going to cut through it. How am I doing, guys? Am I doing... No, I'm not doing okay. Well, this is the nature of learning. <laughs> you guys, we're all learning this together, and like everyone will come out and say, you're right. You're, you're learning, so let's just keep trying. And Mars in Aquarius doesn't take it personally like other Mars signs does because it's being constrained by Saturn. I should say at this point that the ancient... I, I'm, I'm a Vedic astrologer, uh, although I use Western measurements. And in the Vedic sense, anciently, Aquarius was ruled by Saturn. Now, there's still a resonance for you Western astrologers, if you're watching. There might, there would still be a resonance with Uranus upon this Mars. For me, Uranus, the planet, doesn't just pull your energy out into wild places. What happens with Mars and Aquarius is that where Capricorn is a constant versatile energy, where they're, when Mars is in Capricorn, the person is learning to fixate on something that will get them cultivate themselves in this field and it's more about activity learning how to be the best at whatever you do and that's why mars is exalted in capricorn mars is not exalted in aquarius it is still good but there is what happens for me the uranus factor here is that mars in aquarius fixates its will so distinctly in a mental cerebral way on whatever it's doing that it can actually stop paying attention to its own body and its own needs because it's pulling the response by the responsibility that it has enforced upon itself mars and aquarius pr wants to prove itself there's an egotism there that's not necessarily there in mars and capricorn mars and capricorn can do enough and then be done be happy and then just rock and roll I did what, what was expected of me. I actually went over and above what was expected of me because that's what I wanted to do in this moment. Good. I can go away now. I can go and rest, sleep, come back to it, and apply myself in that way again. My light's being a little bit funky with me here. Mars and Aquari Aquarius just wants to fit themselves on a strata and just push this recreational energy towards their own desires with all these friends or these groups in this way, constantly pulling a group energy into its effort and pulling itself through with the pressure of other people. Uh, and they want that pressure. It's a willful energy. They almost enjoy the feeling that they're kind of cutting 
through everyone else's patience, but it's for everyone else's sake. So what Mars and Aquarius is trying to get everybody to trust them. I'm pushing you guys a little bit hard here, but it's for everybody's betterment if we can get through the tension of this phase and move into the next thing. And every group needs somebody to push them in that way. Now this is a Capricorn sun. So a lot of the energy that we would have seen in Mars and Capricorn is in this Capricorn sun, although it's in this laser beam shotgun Mars and Aquarius. Because Mars and Aquarius pushes itself into its own individual entrepreneurial venture, that's what this person will do, is they're an individualist. Even though Capricorn is willing to look good, look proper, look responsible and functional for the job and role they've been given in their group uh, project. They want to look reliable and responsible and they are really contributing to the job in the way that the group wants them to contribute. The Sun in Capricorn wants that reliability. Basically they want a firm position somewhere where they can constantly pour in the dedication and devotion to their work and to the, their, the cultivation of their own pushing their own limits. They want something that will stably, firmly cultivate their ability to do that. That's what the Sun and Capricorn ego wants. And they'll want this in relationship too. They'll want a, a partner who can just stay with them, be ready for the times when they're emotionally objective and detached and says, honey, I can't come and kiss you every night for this coming week because this week I've got to work, work, work all day at work because the boss needs me to do this thing and you need to be able to do that for me, darling. You need to be able to just hold your own, go for a girl's, go hang out with your girlfriends for the week because I need to be able to focus on my job right now. Capricorn needs that in a partner, needs that in a family, needs that in a boss. That's the kind of thing that Capricorn's son wants. It's the Mars and Aquarius that can push that in some whack ways where they're still responsible and reliable. They won't shoot themselves in the foot, but their preference, their ideal, and what will probably be carved out for them based on this preference is that they want to stand out as an individual in whatever firm thing that they're gripping. Whatever skill they've applied themselves to that they can now use this skill on. This is somebody who wants to take all of that and build into a structure, a framework that's theirs. It's uniquely theirs. Their particular application in this group product, project. There's a bit of a lone wolf energy to Mars and Aquarius. They're really quite the individualist. And they will add this individualism to whatever the sun is. In this case, it's a Capricorn. Uh, most Capricorns are, you know, wherever they're at. They're trying to climb some kind of ladder and to look good, to look like they got things going on. This Mars in Aquarius has sunglasses on, a little bit more gold around the neck, a little bit more tech savvy, high, you know, things that make them look impressive on a social strata. Because it's the social strata, it's the collective idealism, it's the, it's the Aquarian 11th house groups social group spheres that this person applies their de Mars, their desire to get over their own animal impulses and to see that they've atta successfully attained some height using their willpower. They especially want this to be done in other people's sight so that the people can be like, wow, that person has this ability, this swagger to them. They want to be known as someone who can grip everyone's attention and pull up, apply it in an individualized way that also fits the group project at hand, especially with the Capricorn ego, wanting to be reliable for a big company, but in a big, in a unique way. This is somebody who will probably apply themselves to a company, some big corporate ladder situation, but all that time they will have been secretly involving themselves in some kind of skill, some kind of network loophole where they can take the responsibility and energy of their job that they've gripped themselves to and apply it to some entrepreneurial venture, some kind of small business that they've been dreaming about all their lives, uh, music, musician, artists, 
depending on what Mars is to your sign, these kind of things can happen. And whatever it is, it'll likely be reliable. It'll be unique in an individual expression. This is part of the fun of Aquarius, is that it's Uranus and Saturn. Saturn being restricting, conservative. It's the fact that the Mars energy is going through such tried and true ways and is so fixated in the Saturn way on moving all the other pieces, telling you, honey, I could. we're supposed to do date night, but tonight instead, I'm going to focus on my little hobby thing tonight. I'll get you back, baby. Don't worry. I just need to do this tonight. It's all these little sacrifices and willful pushings upon all the people in their lives that develop this little secret weapon of theirs that is this individualized thing. And it will be it will be a secure, surefire way of having whatever that little thing is. It will get there, and it will be unique because of that Uranus thing. The Uranus energy comes from the restricting energy. Saturn restricts the Mars energy here until it's this person is ready to explode and says, you know what, I've been doing this thing long enough, now it's time for me to completely expand. Go and network with people and expand and make my life easier with whatever it is that I've been building towards. <clears throat> the fact that these two are ruled by Saturn is not lost on us either. Wherever Saturn is in your chart is going to be very important because it's going to channel the strength of your Sun and Mars. If your, sun, if your Saturn is close to Libra or it's exalted, then it will grip, it will apply itself in a responsible way to the people and obligations outside of itself. It won't second guess those connections. It'll be responsible and it will get the glory of being a responsible Capricorn, uh, of being somebody who can show up for the job in, a, in its own unique ways. You need other people. You need Libra, wherever your Saturn is. The, the expression of your sun and Mars needs a responsibility to the businesses, contracts, close partnerships that you have in your life. Because that's, think about it, Sun and Mars are in Saturn ruled signs, so they need a strength of Saturn. If you don't have a strength of Saturn, then Mars and the Sun won't be able to grip their glory, their identity that they're seeking to project. Saturn is exalted in Libra, so just consider that for yourself. No matter where, if you've got Saturn in Aries, you might not want to do that. You might want to internally grip your own, again, your own intra entrepreneurial project or whatever, but don't ever let it slip from you. The fact that Saturn is exalted in Libra and does best when other responsibilities to other people are pulling you through your own emotional breakdowns, your own emotional self-doubt, because Saturn looks down. It's a self-doubt planet. Mars and Sun here will be constantly looking down, plotting sure-footedly towards the responsibilities that they know that they have to apply themselves to. And that's just the way it is. But when Saturn, again, is well-placed, if it has positive aspects from Venus and Mercury, its friends, then it will make this reliable, conservative, responsible attitude towards their ambition, Sun and Mars ambition. A good Saturn will make it so it's easier. A good Mercury and a good Venus will make it so that you have things in your lives that make it easier on you to do this to apply yourself, your ambitions, to this rather reliable area that is Capricorn and Aquarius. <clears throat> now I've just talked quite a little bit about both of these signs. What I want to do now, as I've been doing for all these signs, uh, what I do is uh, give a little bit of my own spiel, which I just did. Now we're going to talk about a reading from Erotic Astrology by Phyllis Vega, talking a little bit about how Mars and Aquarius reflects on the ego, the sexy, juicy personality nature of the Sun and Capricorn. Sun and Capricorn here is more reliable than anything. It's not the most necessarily outgoing person, although the Mars and Aquarius can make for a very unique, offbeat, individualistic individual who people will be like, wow, look at what this person has going on. They seem so reserved, 
and there's a double reserve here because Mars is Mars and the Sun are being hemmed in or sort of put behind the facade that is Saturn's reserve. Saturn not wanting to say more than they need to, not wanting to express more wild energy than they need to. It's the Mars and Aquarius that so will be very quiet, you know, will seem to be savvy, will seem to not have much going on, although they're out, like out, outgoing in a sense and very aloof. This is a person who's just like, whatever, going along, everything's cool. Wow, that's interesting. Seems so interesting to me. Oh, it's cool. Wow, look at that. You know, it's this sort of aloofness and detachment uh, that comes through with like, when it's my time to shine or do something cool, or there's an egotism moment where it's like, hey, Steve, catch. And then they go, bang. Got it. No big deal. You know, it's like they want to have those moments and make it look cool like it's nothing, but to also stand out with it. They are looking for moments to stand out because the Mars in Aquarius is almost more interested in standing out than it is in applying the responsibility and coolness and reserve that the Capricorn ego is secretly trying to produce to hold on to it's almost like this it's the wackiness the aquarius that allows the reserved sun and capricorn ego to shine in the ways that it secretly wants to anybody who's cool any capricorn who's cool like this they actually want to have something going on in order to show that this coolness is just you know i got no nothing no big deal i'm kind of a hot shot but you know i don't i don't need to show that to the likes of you the people who know me know what I've got going on. And they want to they don't want that to be fake. They don't they want to actually have things going on. Money in the bank, a woman who's a hot little trophy thing or a, a lover, a man who's got lots going on that they can kind of, you know, I got this kind of got this thing happening. And it's the Mars and Aquarius that is going to apply willful individualistic effort towards getting those things, those people those resources, those friends, those attainments that are so way out there. Like you applied all your effort to do that one thing and the Capricorn has the ego to pull all of their energy towards that one directive so that they can proudly say that they did that thing, especially if Saturn is, is in a good place. So if Saturn's not in a good place, then this person will just apply this type of mentality until they're 60 years old when they finally make it and they can, you know, They've probably spilled their whole lives in this thing. Now they can finally show Saturn time, old. The sun and Mars can finally come through the sphere of Saturn, old age. Well, they finally say, yes, I did this thing that I've been trying to apply myself to all this time. If Saturn is well-placed, then they won't have to work their whole lives to feel like they finally got that glory. It'll be coming to them the whole time. And it'll be easy and enjoyable because Saturn is well placed, because Saturn is being put to efforts that are inherently supportive of what your Saturn's trying to do. I digress. Saturn's a very important planet for you because your Sun and Mars, your willpower, your ability to apply your ambition, and your desire to project yourself confidently upon the world. These lean on how Saturn and your unconscious grip on life interacts with your responsibilities and the things that you hold yourself to. Now, that was a long go. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was my little spiel. Next up is Erotic Astrology by Phyllis Vega. This will be the last little bit of this video. We're going to round it out with a reading talking about Sun in Capricorn with Mars in Aquarius at an erotic level. I always like to add this in because while astrology can give very dry armchair, you know, keeping an arm's distance about the character of in sort of, you know, how your life's going to unfold, having your Mars and Sun in this combination, I like to add a little bit of sexuality because that's a more lived, visceral experience of the sign combination in question. Sun in Capricorn with Mars in Aquarius. Despite an apparently easygoing outer personality, it's the Mars in Aquarius, yeah, whatever, it's all good. And even the Sun in Capricorn can be aloof, although 
again, this is what's going on here. The Mars in Aquarius applies itself in a very open way. I'm ready to do whatever, you know, like talk to whoever. Yeah, it's easy, man. I got a grip on this human being a human social person. Fuck, I got a hard grip on it, man. It's nothing. What's up? So the Mars in Aquarius is outgoing and aloof in that way. But there is a reserved inner goat standing guard over your privacy and independence. It's the Capricorn. Since you like to maintain a certain amount of emotional distance, you rarely allow anyone to get close too close to you. Not only is the Saturn and Sun and Capricorn playing with emotional things and are just not used to emotions in that way, but the Mars in Aquarius also is not used to applying itself in a way other than this cool a detachment. The, co the sunglasses and the ability to be in socialized and be like, yeah, whatever, you know, what's up, man? Like Mars and Aquarius' ability to do that necessarily requires you to kind of tiptoe over top of emotional sentiment. And anyone who's a good lover for you will see this and enjoy it, that you're so willing to be straight up to people, you know, uh, that you'll be so often cutting and sharp in the way that you dance over top of emotional things. Just, you know, if you've got a good moon and a good Venus, then you won't do this ignorantly to the point of neglect because the sun and Mars are not about your emotional reality. What this is is that how you apply yourself in a sexual way can often be, you know, you might want to, you can probably choke and, you know, like kind of pull hair and sort of be this pushy energy that pushes for it. Or if you're a woman and you're more identify as woman, you lean more towards the subtones, the person who likes to be submissive, then you'll be asking for these sorts of things, putting their hand on their throat and just sort of like spank me. And, you know, it's this cerebral erotic level that is not the same as the feeling reflective level of water signs. I got Mars and Scorpio and before I do anything like that I'm gonna read you very deeply put my hand here and just sort of be like how you feeling and just sort of like feel where you're going with it and if you're not in that place you know like I've got to feel that you're going to that place after a long like we've been hanging out and you and I just seem to be going towards this feeling place reflectively quietly trying to discern what the other person's all about mars and aquarius is very different from that but it's just sort of just like completely mental put my hand here uh she's not into the choking thing okay pull her hair here all right spank spank her butt i was like what do i you know just they're just going i don't care it's whatever and it's this aloofness that i'm just doing that it doesn't even look like i'm trying hard but the person, the partner, sees all of this, and it's like moldable. It's air. It's detached. It's not emotional, for better or worse, depending on if the partner likes that emotional thing or not. So, you rarely allow anyone to get too close to you. Sexually, however, you're open-minded and certainly more unconventional than other Capricorns who can just be rather just like, let's just do this drive and not dry, but let's just do this vanilla, make it intense and sensual. Oh, 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 oh. It's that Capricorn thing. Oh, oh, oh. Like they just get so, so, so into it. And there's an intense sexuality that they want to do it and be really hard on it. Uh, but it can be rather, they're so into that. They're so earthy and into their bodies that they kind of can lose their, the play, the lightness of it. Whereas Aquarius is a little bit more to willing to stand at an arm's length and play around with some funky, often kinky things, too. However, they're at such a mental and even feeling gripping industrial Saturn level with both of these that sometimes you get so caught up in other things, in the job, in emotional realities that we're trying to grip, I just don't understand, you know, and they're trying to communicate emotionally. I mean, they don't try to do that, but their partners will probably get them to do that. And they're like, what do you mean with this very earth and air lack of emotionality? And when you go through them, it can come out intensely, you know? Uh, so they can get, they, you can get caught up in things and forget about lovemaking altogether. And the idea that this is us coming together, not just me trying to please you so that I can feel good and so that you can feel good, but actually asking, 
you know, like, how are we? Would you like to, you know, like, seeing where the person's at, feeling where the person's at in that way? So you can just forget about lovemaking altogether. Uh, even just banging can just drift from you because there's such other important things going on. But the Capricorn in you is earthy, all-encompassing, and the human body is in the physical reality, and Capricorn does not neglect that. It usually only takes a little reminder to spark your latent desire. And when you relax, your innate passion and sensuality of Capricorn emerge, where there is this desire for sentiment, for closeness, for closure, not although it doesn't need to be deeply oh i love you or anything it's still a detached and objective and mental level but those checks need to be there the capricorn does want to get out the deep sense of human bonding in this way when you relax your innate passion and sensuality emerge the few easy suggestions to get you started you quickly become a spirited and inventive lover. As usual, this video has turned out longer than I intended it to. I'm going to start trying to keep them a little bit more concise, but it's just how it is. It makes sense that Capricorn, Saturn ruled, that Mars and Aquarius would have to blend and I would have to get through a longer explanation of it. I digress. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm Dustin Cormier for How to Rock Astrology. This has been Sun and Capricorn with Mars in Aquarius. I hope this taught you guys a little bit about the difference between Sun and Mars, what Mars is, what the Sun is, how they're both kind of like, well, the Sun is the center and Mars is the right arm of the Sun. In the same way that my right arm my general, the general of my army is not the same as me. He's got to focus on the army and organizing energy. But his will ought to be aligned with the king's directives. The general gets his directives from the king. And in the same way, Mars and its skills, its abilities, gets its directive, gets its purpose, gets its meaning, gets its place from whatever the sun's ego is, from whatever you are desiring to project as a self as a Capricorn. So I hope that this video helped for you to see the difference between those two and to understand them and that it will help you get further understanding of how to apply what Mars is by rising your rising sign, what houses does Mars rule, what houses does the sun rule, and how do they apply to this whole schema that I've just given you. So thanks for watching, folks. Stay in touch with me. Drop me a like and a comment if you dug it. And feel free to subscribe because I always got more stuff coming out in the world of Dustin Cormier and How to Rock Astrology. Thanks for watching, folks. See you on the next one.